A good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to anybody who's watching this. I was asked to go through my process in processing Loot Studios for an FDM print. And so I wanted to go and show the basic process I go through to try and get the best quality. I'm going to use the Dragon um, Ash Gex uh, body. Um, as the the example in here, so looking at Mesh Mixer, uh, we bring it in, um, and you can see with no supports, it's orientated in this way. Uh, the first thing I go and always do is just go and edit and align it so it's on the appropriate build plate uh, and centered, uh, so I can recenter the view. Um, I can now go and, and see it when I do my analysis. Now. The main thing I always look to try and understand is by performing analysis, orientation, I let the system go and determine the least overhangs. Uh, the overhang setting that I have is, um, in terms of orientation, I think it is at 45 degree um, setting. It goes and analyzing, analyzes and provides me the best options that I have. And in this case, it is to, to go and place it pretty much um, almost on its back um, with most of the details being able to print without any supports, especially on the front area where you want it to be as clean as possible. You can see here my overhang value is at 45 angle and I am doing a priority factor of one under the support area. Now that I accept this, I move forward with going and saying, okay, the best structures that Loot goes and does are pretty much tree-based for resin printing. I want to also have a tree structure for my um, overhangs and for FDM. And to do that, it's basically the default uh, values uh, that I have previously gone in and tweaked a little bit. It's selecting, I think it was the replicator three millimeter defaults in Mesh Mixer. And then the custom settings that I changed is I will be printing at a 0.1 millimeter layer height. I want to make sure my tip diameter is the same as my nozzle. So it's at a 0.4 millimeter um, diameter. And my base for my tree supports is seven millimeters. The rest of the stuff, I pretty much left as is. I then generate the support, and this takes a, a bit of time. It goes through and analyzes all the places where I have overhangs um, uh, of the dragon um, that are greater than my angle threshold of uh, 35. So that's actually you know, um, a 65 um, degree uh, consideration that, um, that I need to, to take into account. And then it creates the tree branches for me. Um, now, what I would go and now look at after the tree branches have formed would be anything in relation to something um, that is actually covering um, a claw or something, um, a wing tip, or whatever the case, where the support tree item is covering actual part of the model. I want to obviously remove that, and you can remove that by pressing Control and clicking on it, or when you've done the separate shells, you can actually select it and delete it. So that's my process that I'm really going and looking for. Um, obviously, I'm talking a bit while this actually processes and generates this. And as you can see, it goes and creates quite a, a detailed tree structure. If we kind of zoom in, though, what we you will go and notice, um, and uh, sorry, I just need to, yeah, uh, let me move that down. You can see that on the key areas, it is a very small touch point that it actually has with the base model. So any of the, the main supports you can see are just really uh, hitting the, the tip of, of the, the actual model that I really am worried about. Um, what I also do after the print is actually finished, I would go, and at the moment I'm gonna go and click, click done, I would now go and have uh, the detail of these items done as um, 
once it's printed and I take and remove the supports anywhere it's tipped, a little bit of using a blowtorch or a, a, um, a little bit of heat kind of gets rid of the little bit of a scuff mark that might be on the body. The biggest problem and, and what I worry about in this area is obviously, is this stable? Is when it starts printing, am I going to, is something going to break here? And I'm going to show the, the way I kind of deal with that. To export uh, this process, now that I've got the tree structure, I want to go and say edit and I want to separate the shells. What that will go and do, um, and I probably should actually make this whole thing bigger for everybody to, to go and have a look at, um, but this is my my screen display. Um, here we have now all of the the actual shells broken up and, and down. Um, the the body is the the main item anything else all of these individual shell shells i want to go and i'm going to go and shift all the way down shift click so it actually goes and selects all of the the items and i'm going to go over here and i'm going to go and say combine now that i combine that i'm going to end up with basically two um, items. I'm going to end up with the body. Nothing's changed here. I haven't edited. I can go and export that as the body and I can go and export that as um, an SDL um, by going and clicking again export and I can come over and you can see here instead of being in the base folder that I, I have over here under no supports I can go and I go one folder back and you can see I've done a body and I've done a body dot support. So I, ex I export this item as the body and the other item as the body dot support. So that's pretty much the, the mesh mixer process that I go through in order to, to have the model um, like that. Once I've done that, I go into, and I'll use the, the actual ones that I did previously, I come here into the actual body, I go and select that one and open up in Prusa Slicer. So you can see that it's pretty much done the same orientation as it existed previously. Now I need to come here and I need to add the supports back to the body. So I do that by clicking on the editing area and saying add as a part and I choose load and I will go and choose the body dot support STL and now you can see all of these items are listed. Now in Prusa Slicer and I'll see if I can make this a little bit bigger for you. Um, in Prusa Slicer what you go and have is the default um, quality for 0.1 millimeter. I have taken that and I have made a small number of adjustments to it in order to do my minis. The first one is a 50% infill. This came from a YouTube video. I think it's the Lord of the Print. Um, maybe I'll, I'll go and link that in the video um, that says that 50% is good. Um, one layer, point one layer height is good because um, the extruder doesn't create too much heat um, on the layers and warp it, and the 50% allows for the hot plastic to expand, etc. So I always have a 50%. I always turn on the brim in order to make the base and layer one as much as possible. And if I go and have a look at the other settings, though, the only things that I really have, as I say, is a 50% infill. My skirt and my brim, I've turned off my skirt and I've put a five millimeter brim and my support materials um, are, are basically there for generating support materials. Okay, and that comes under this area for support and forces only. And what I do here is I come and have a look at the model and I go and say, look, I'm worried that the printer is going to break, especially something here, this long support, this long support is going to break as it um, is has pressure applied to it. To do that, I want to go and enforce that area. So the way I go and do that is by going to the paint on supports. I lower the, the circle to 
you know, about one. So I've got little dots. And then I'll go and I'll just place those in each of the areas that I want to actually go and provide a more stable support consideration. So by going and doing so, I'm not going and putting Prusus supports on the model itself because I find them very difficult to remove. I'm adding these to the actual support uh, tree structure that came from Mesh Mixer. And that way it adds additional um, stability to the actual supports, but does not mean that um, I'm actually having to have difficulty removing the supports from the model. The model is generally very easy to remove just with some pliers and using the supports and doing it in this way. The other aspect that I, I need to now go and do, because I've gone and, and structured this, is important for these actual supports. I don't want them printing at the 10 millimeters and being 50% infill. So I need to go and just take the support layer or, um, or the SDL and I need to change the infill and I also change my layers and perimeters. So instead of having three perimeters, I'll have two. I'll also just drop down um, my top and bottom layers by two layers each and I'll change my infill to 0%. Now, pretty much I'm ready to go and, and have a look at this base. Um, I can go and now slice this under these settings. It's going to go and process it. What I am expecting and what I'm trying to get is I'm trying to get a good first layer that is pretty solid. It's actually, instead of just being a couple of points, it's now a completely flat surface. And from then I have supports building up to my tree supports so that I create stability that the trees, even if they broke, they would then just come back and be reproduced um, a bit later on and still be able to support um, the consideration. So I've got a backup plan if my tree support breaks. Um, the other item that I really am looking at here, as you can go and see, as it's gone through the slicer, you can see if I look at the bottom, I've got a, quite a more flat surface. I've got a lot of surface, so there should be good adhesion uh, to the bottom layer. I come with these items building up. The tree supports as it's going to go and grow. You can go and see here. I'm going to start with a good layer. I'm going to build it up. And then when it only starts hitting the model, in case something broke here, I've at least got something to support and it can still build the tree on. And then as it goes up here, we go start worrying, oh, there's the claw. I can now say, oh, you know, that's how it's going to be. The only point it's going to touch is a small little area. So removing this is going to be pretty simple. And uh, and it results in, in what I regard as a really, really good filled um, and FDM print. Um, these prints go away. And as I said, my recommendation, I have a little blowtorch. Um, you can either do um, creme brulees with it or with a low heat, you can just brush over it and it just uh, gets rid of any little nibs and, and, and other items. Hopefully this has been helpful. Um, I, I hope it works for you guys and yeah. Uh, good luck, and uh, hopefully some of my other prints will, will also turn out as good as this one did. Thank you very much, and have a good day.